Hey everyone, this is Blackhawk SE and welcome back to my channel. So in this video I'm going to talk about uh, a specific skill tree that I built for the Battlemaster 1G. And I want to use the Battlemaster 1G as a specific example of an energy boat skill tree. Uh, I think it's the Battlemaster 1G is a really good example um, to use for uh, something for an energy boat because it's still one of the better Actually, maybe one of the best energy boats uh, in the game for Inner Sphere right now. And so I think this is something that maybe you can uh, model your skill trees off of. Uh, I realized, you know, I might, I'm not probably doing everything appropriately, um, but you know, I think this is a pretty good uh, skill tree that I built up, and I just wanted to show that to you guys. One thing I wanted to point out about the last patch was I think the Battlemaster 2C was nerfed down pretty hard. And so I think in, it's no longer um, one of the best uh, IS assaults. I mean, it still has good hard points, but um, still, I lost its range, it lost its uh, agility quirks. And so I think in this current, currently I think maybe the Battlemaster 1G could be a little bit better. That's why I try to use the 1G as an example instead of the 2C. Let's actually get into the build to give you guys some context here. So this is a fairly standard um, large laser boat uh, for the 1G. So we have five large lasers instead of six. Um, you can do six if you want, but I think five is a pretty good balance between alpha size and uh, heat efficiency. So we also have a 395XL engine, um, which gives us a pretty good top speed. But in this in this last patch, the engine size and mobility has been decent, so if you were piloting the 1G before, this will seem maybe a little bit more sluggish. Uh, the 20 double heatsinks keeps it fairly cool, so um, it did lose, the Battlemaster did lose its um, energy heat gen quirk, so that's kind of sad. But we're, we're going to try to get it back uh, with the skills that we build up. So I'm going to talk about the skill trees one by one, and we're going to start with firepower first because that's the most important one. Now there's some obvious decisions that you know they can see here where we have we don't have any projectile weapons so we're going to not do anything in velocity. We don't have missiles and we don't have ballistics so we're going to avoid all those. Laser duration in my opinion isn't as huge once you have enough laser duration reduction um, because I mean even if you decrease it by like a lot here, you're still the large laser duration is still not going to be very very short. It's not going to be like the large pulse laser duration. So we're going to reduce the laser duration by a little bit, but then we're going to maybe leave this one down here open because if we want to get this unlocked, we have to spend at least uh, two more uh, skills to get down here. The most important ones that you're looking at is range and heat gen. Um, even though heat gen is important, I haven't gotten this one because um, I just wanted more skills for some of these other trees. Um, this is one of the things that you may want to take, tweak for yourself. Um, if you want to focus hard on heat gen, um, you might want to just unlock this one as well. Moving on to armor, the durability of the Battlemaster is, uh, is an issue. That's why I want to invest some uh, skill points on the armor. So um, I don't want to just spend a whole lot of uh, points on armor because I think uh, you know other trees deserve some attention as well. Um, I think you know after the fire firepower tree, the um, the armor the the survival tree is probably the second most important. But at the same time, you do need to invest in other places. Um, so. With with armor and structure, uh, we're really aiming for armor hardening and uh, skeleton density as uh, the ones that you should focus on. Armor actually, I think, is more important than skeletal density because um, remember, even though these are the skeletal density uh, percentage is twice for each node is twice that of the armor armor. Um, skeletal like structure is more easily damaged and it's half to it's half the value of the max armor that you have on the mech. So that's why it makes sense to have um, more armor, you know, to prefer armor over, over skeletal density. So this is what we're going for. Um, you know, here we, you know, to get to these nodes, we have to unlock one for each. And just, it wasn't really worth it for me um, to do that. So like, it's really nice if I can unlock one and get two out of 
uh, out of it, so which is what happened here. And now because the Battlemaster has its engine desynced from its mobility, um, we do want to try to regain some uh, agility back. However, I think agility is probably the least important uh, skill tree that I've kind of um, built out. Um, probably because, you know, I think even if you add as that much, uh, a lot of mobility to it, um, it's still not that fast anyways. Um, so I've built out, you know, it's just seven nodes on here. Uh, mostly want to get the Heartbreak and Connect Burst uh, skills just to have it, you know, just respond a little bit better to uh, my commands, my keyboard commands. Moving on to mech operations. This tree is pretty important uh, because um, because of the cool run and heat containment skills that we need for our energy boat. Now, we try to find the pa fastest path towards um, the kind of cool runs that we need. Heat containment is still important, but I think, in my opinion, is not as important. So this is why I made the decision to unlock this kind of branch here to get to these two cool runs. Now, I can undo this and get these three instead and have, uh, I believe, three left over. Uh, but I chose not to do that because I think the heat containment is not as good as the cool runs. And so it's perfectly reasonable if you decide uh, to unlock this branch instead of this one for an energy boat, for example. Within the sensor skill tree, uh, which I think is actually pretty important for like larger mechs, I think um, you would larger mechs would definitely help from radar deprivation um, because you know they're kind of slower to get back into cover, and so having the radar deprivation on even a 60%, um, which is what I have here, will help um, them get into get like kind of take the enemy's attention off of them faster. Um, you know, without radar deprivation, there's a little bit more time that you know the enemy sees where you are and sees where you're going and kind of pays more attention to you and how uh, the locks on you, uh, the LRM locks on you, will stay on longer. Um, I would obviously like to have 100% radar deprivation by unlocking these, but you have to go all the way down here. <laughs> I think kind of PGI realized that these are kind of like the target nodes. They put them way down there for uh, out of reach unless you really want to invest in them. Um, Seismic sensor, same thing. Um, you know, I would like to get that second seismic sensor here to have 200 meter seismic sensor range, but you know, 100 is is okay. Is not is better than nothing. Finally, we have the consumables um, branch, and we uh, this is a pretty good investment for laser boats and energy boats, uh, especially. Because of these are all four of these are pretty useful. You're really only wasting one skill node here uh, if you're not taking, which I assume you're not going to be taking uh, an arty strike and, or uh, air strike uh, when you're taking an energy boat. Because the cool shots are just going to be a lot more useful for you. So this whole skill tree, get it? Um, if you're, uh, you know, something like a laser boat uh, that runs into heat problems, especially. If you're running like maybe two lasers on a sniper, maybe not so much, but uh, you're maybe not, you won't run into heat problems as much. But you know, something with five or six large lasers, you probably want to have that additional cooling. Okay, let's summarize the bonuses that the Battlemaster 1G now has with this skill tree setup. The most important is the range, which is uh, plus 25%, which I believe is greater than the original set of quirks and the range module. We have some structure bonus and armor bonus, which we didn't have with the original quirk set. Uh, the heat dissipation, I believe, is less than what was the less than the value of the double basics from before, but it's okay. Um, max heat, I believe, is also a little bit lower, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, but we still have a little bit here. We also have the laser duration uh, skill that we didn't have before with the Battlemaster 1G. We also gain some deceleration and acceleration, but I don't think this makes up for number one, the engine desync, and number two, the loss of the double basics. And of course, we get a lot of stuff that we don't really need, like um, screen shake, uh, fall damage. Um, you know, I think this is kind of what people who are not liking the skill tree are annoyed about. Like, you get these skills that you really don't need, but. 
you know, I think it gives you a level of customization that you didn't have before. So overall, in my opinion, it's okay. Uh, if you, I think if you get kind of get used to it and kind of like forget the fact that you have these kind of um, sort of useless skills, you could say, um, you, you, some people might change their minds. All right, let's see a demo of the Battlemaster 1G5 large laser build uh, with this particular skill tree that we have. I just want to mention that I don't think the the match that I played was really it's not a real, it's not a demo of skill first of all um, it's I didn't do a very good job in it and I'll point out the mistakes that I made um, but I think what it really shows is you know how quickly the mech moves the agility uh, the range that you get the heat dissipation um, thankfully also it's on a, a a heat neutral map so you can kind of see how the heat dissipation how the energy heat generation works in a neutral environment so you can kind of adjust in your mind how it will work in say frozen city or uh, terra therma so let's get into the match and hope you guys enjoy all right in this match we're on river city which as i mentioned was a heat neutral map so right here what we're trying to do is use our high mouse to peek over this platform to see if there's anything over it but we didn't notice that oh it was a summoner we didn't notice that summoner uh, ppc boat immediately so we got hit a couple times on the second shot i could have tried to torso twist away but you know, i was kind of lazy <laughs> early morning didn't really want to do that so we decided that right side wasn't be, wasn't going to be good for us because of that because of that summoner there we didn't have the range to uh, to engage very very easily could have made the shots. I could have uh, aimed a little bit better on that Raven, but oh well. Now we want to try to avoid the range of that UAV. We don't have the torso pitch to try to hit it, so we're just trying to back off as much as uh, much much as reasonable. So 700 meters is close enough for us to do some damage not quite uh, optimal but still okay I mean if you're hitting them at 700 with with five uh, large lasers it's still gonna hurt even at reduced damage per large laser looks like we're able to kind of keep these mechs at bay uh, great UAV by the way um, we're able to keep these mechs at bay for the time being. Here's that hunchback. So, like, we could have t tried to torso twist that shot, but, you know, it would have been, it would not have been fast enough for me to try to spread damage over to my arm. Um, the best we can do is try to, you know, return fire and make him pay for that, um, make him pay for that sh shot as much as possible. I didn't have a shot on that hunchback's uh, torso, so I try to. I was trying to hit his arm to make him maybe make him move out a little bit. And that's something you can do. Like if you can't get a clean shot, sometimes if you just poke him with a couple of lasers, he'll just move out of there. Yeah, that <laughs> the torso twist angle is a huge problem in the BLR 1G. Uh, so it might be a good idea, actually, thinking about it now to invest in maybe some torso uh, angle. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think there's a skill for that, but it's not it's not so important to me. I, I don't think the 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 angle increase is going to be big enough for it to really matter all that much. So I didn't really invest anything in that, if there is something at all. There's that Marauder that we were shooting at um, earlier. You can see how nice the high mounts are on here. Like it can like peek over that ridge. Oh, that guy made a mistake there. Like with the with the Battlemaster 1G, like when you're torso twisting, it's really nice to also try to turn at the same time with your WASD keys while you're torso twisting. So you're getting um, so you're not kind of locked into that max angle, max torso twist angle. Oh, 
thanks for stepping in front of me. Yeah, my torso is getting shot up. My CT is getting shot up pretty bad, but so I do need to be a little bit care more careful here. But somehow these guys are not shooting me, even though I'm shut down now. I mean, there's could there could be a mech that just peeks out of that um, little gap in between the buildings and just shoot my CT, and I'll be just dead. But uh, thankfully, I'm able to escape that situation. Target acquired. New target acquired. Now we NASCAR. Target oh, <laughs> that could have been that could have been my death right there. Um, but he decided to focus on the um, Cyclops instead. And again, I could have decided to torso twist, twist that. Um, didn't do it. I thought, hey, you know, I'm gonna die. Might as well just go out shooting. But he's apparently that uh, that. That Black Knight also spread his damage all over my, uh, all over my armor too. So I, I didn't die, thankfully. And that could have been another death moment, but <laughs> I'm like I could have died so many times here. That that summoner could have shot me. I think you know here the investment into the. Uh, the armor and structure quirks or uh, skills really helped out as well, and so you can see, you can see kind of there's a little bit more survivability in the battlemaster than usual. I think you can feel it. The heat is okay, it seems like, but uh, not a huge difference from before. Target destroyed. New target acquired. The range also improves, target I think, um, but not really so much to write home about. And here's that summoner we've been dealing with. New target acquired. Or is it that one? Destroyed. Heat level critical. Base is being captured. I think I do feel the laser duration uh, shortening uh, just a little bit too, so it's also another benefit. Base twenty five percent captured. Base is being captured. Yeah, the last guy is at our base, so we just uh, I think I'm not gonna get there anyways. Acquired. Stripped Hugan. Target destroyed. And that is match. So despite the kind of mediocre gameplay, the 1G did pretty well in that match. I think if you skill your mech to enhance the strengths of the, of the hard points or a specific playstyle, I think you'll find that sometimes the skill tree can make your mech better than it was before. Certainly, if I was playing this match before the skill tree, I probably would have died because of the lack of durability quirks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe for more inf informative videos like this. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.